You know when Sokka threw the boomerang and he could hit 10 people, it could go through water, bounce 13 times and then come back? I kind of went, what the fuck? I know how to get an angle on him. Yeah, boomerang! Ever heard about an electric boomerang? Neither have I, neither have Google. So how about we push that up to the surface? Ultra super duper small brushless motors? There's my answer. Okay, one kind of large, one actually large. I wanna see how the scaling is connected. We're putting a bunch of weight on it. I wanna see how the flight characteristics is between the sizes, and so that's why it's such a big difference. Let's try the smaller one first. Here we go. Oh. Oh, Jesus. Way floatier, you can tell it has way more lift. You don't have to throw as hard. You see, it just it goes to the sky. There's a bunch of kids trying the boomerangs. At this point though, we had to simulate the weight from three motors in order to see if the boomerang could even fly with increased mass. Now, because of this, I scrapped the idea of an electric boomerang, but then I decided to do this. I recorded that years ago. It was just one of those projects that never happened, but I'm still wondering how Sokka's boomerang really worked. I have a sneaking suspicion he must have had some motors in there. So in today's video, we're doing it. The electric boomerang. And apparently, I wasn't the only one thinking about this. The US Army even made the boomerang drone, and it looks suspiciously similar. It's not going to be a radio controlled boomerang. It is going to be RC as I have to adjust the throttle, but I don't intend for it to fly forward or be able to go left and right. Uh, just a quick side note, we have like the greatest winter ever in Sweden and I was stupid enough to make the boomerang of invisibility. So I figured I would be smart and not throw this one, but I printed a new one in black PLA and it should be as easy as just taking the center hub and attaching all three wings. Man, the sun is brighter than... Oh wait, maybe nothing is brighter than the sun. Well, it's coming back. It didn't quite make it, but almost. Dude, I may have this one. Oh, I think I might got this one. Oh, there's no way. I think I have all the information that I need. All right, just hear me out before judging. I was gonna use the same electric drone motors from this hugely successful boat project that we made, especially regarding the electric speed controllers. The problem is they have two kilograms of thrust each on a 6L battery, which is just insane. But now when I come to think about it, maybe that's exactly what we want. However, in my box, I did manage to find four perfect brushless motors to start with. They are tiny electric Emacs brushless motors. Let's strap them on the boomerang and see if it even goes anywhere. So now for the boomerang, I'm gonna make it slightly smaller. It was a little hard to throw. We're also gonna have to sketch up the motor mounts and just strap all the electronics in and then we're flying. The smallness of these brushless motors can be quite deceptive. But check this out, I've 3D printed three wings. There's a center hub which all the wings will be attached to and I've also already installed one of the motors and it looked just fantastic. Here are the other two and the screws that comes with it. So let's get it all together. I don't want to hear it in the comments no more. My DX6i from 2007, just because it goes full throttle occasionally, I don't see the reasoning for getting a new transmitter. I went out and got the new one and it doesn't work. I can't bind it to the receivers, which is super annoying. So we're back to the DX6i. All three motors are in place. I extended the cables and 
found red propellers, which is gonna look sick with the black boomerang. So we'll be using this four in one EC, which means we don't have to run a separate EC to each motor, it's all in here. I also soldered tiny connectors so that we can plug in this tiny lithium polymer battery. I just gathered all the signal pads into one single signal wire. So that's gonna go into the EC. It's also getting power from this four in one EC, which is great. So it's just one connector to the receiver. And that's what's gonna allow us to adjust the RPMs using this throttle stick. Also, there's still a humongous amount of snow. So we're gonna have to waterproof this using epoxy. Now keep in mind, this is the same EC where this happened. But it was burning pretty bad. Yikes. Now, ironically, that didn't cause it, but the fact that it went full throttle for 10 minutes. Hit it? Oh, it hit, it hit. I can't do anything. That burnt out one of the outputs. So I can only use three motors in this four in one EC. So it's perfect for a boomerang, not so perfect for a drone. Now this is on a two cell battery. Gosh, these are high RPMs. All right, it's the next day. I'm just hoping everything still works. My All right, man, I have no idea if this will work, but I attached a small bearing on the bottom side of the boomerang so that we can spin up the boomerang and see if it can take off with just the wings to generate enough lift. I also attached the uh, battery on the bottom side to not have too much weight above the center line of the motors. IQ 200. I also have the 360 camera ready to go. Let's see if it takes off. Gosh, that's scary. <laughs> I think it's the battery not being able to supply all the amps. It's kind of harder to throw though. For sure that was more pathetic than I was anticipating. So, you see I have a sneaking suspicion that this speed controller is the one that you know. So we'll have to sacrifice the second EC which I'm hoping works. It was this weird noise from the motors. The same kind of vibrating sound you could hear from this. I also printed two completely new boomerangs. Here's the tiny motor that we used before and here's his dad. Holy shit. This particular design of a boomerang is actually hollow. So I added a few holes and we'll see if we can route the wires through the wings. That would be sick if we could make that happen. Okay, the battery just arrived and we're gonna go and pick it up. I just gotta show you this, it's incredible. This gotta be one of the smallest four cell batteries I've ever seen. It's tiny. I think this one performed a lot better. So I sketched up motor mounts and all we gotta do now is mount the motors and speed controllers. So I felt like that was a pretty good one. World's first proper electric RC boomerang. I'm self-announcing it. Here it is. I just made the proper connections on the electric speed controller and I have the receiver just beneath it. And I think that worked out really well if I can get focus on it. And then I just have the battery on the bottom and I've made all the connections to the motors. There it is. Okay, no one asked for it, but here, here we are. So I connected the power and now it just did not start up anymore. Oh shit. Shit, it's not connecting. Turns out I fried the receiver with a new four cell battery. So I had to salvage the receiver. We had already waterproofed with epoxy. Okay, I wanna give you a close up because it looks so good. Now, once again, here's my idea with this kind of setup. I've 3D printed a small holder and what I wanna do is hold it and spin it up, spin it up to such a rotation that the wings generate enough lift for it to take off. Now, if that doesn't work, what we could do is heat these portions up, just the last bit of wings and angle it slightly to increase the pitch. If that doesn't work, we could do that. Now, I had to go with the two battery setup because this is a four cell battery. It couldn't 
supply low enough voltage for the receiver that we successfully salvaged from the other boomerang. There's one battery for the receiver and one battery for the three motors. That's much higher voltage. That's about 16 volts and it will spin a lot faster and hopefully fast enough for this to be epic. Okay, it's not lifting. It's Jesus Christ. Okay, I've angled the wings. Let's see if it makes a difference. That was pretty good that. That was really good. I got to try that again. Oh, it almost came back. Sick. Dude, I bet if we had big enough of a field, it would come back eventually. Man, det är lite skrämmande. Jag kommer tillbaks. Eller inte? Det skulle gått ut lite till. Det skulle gått lite längre. Ah, tror du något gick sönder? Vad är det här? Take off uh, 27. <laughs> ah, det är så långsam. Kom igen då. Kom tillbaks. Ja, jag vet inte vart den är på väg men någonstans ska den. Ja, den går ju bara runt och runt. Nu då? Ja då. Jag ska försöka fånga den. Yes! <laughs> en boomerang som alltid kommer tillbaks. Så jävla klockrent. Är du med? Mm. Ja, den låter så häftigt. <laughs> okay, in conclusion, Sokka's boomerang clearly had motors just like this. Now, the second thing is, the US Army achievement and ability to build these deadly machines should concern us all. If you want to learn about how to build these type of things, you can learn in a way that doesn't have to include diving into books, but instead an interactive platform that lets you master key concepts in everything from data science and math to programming and technology. And that's what Brilliant can offer. Whichever subject you may have already mastered, there are thousands of lessons from basics to advanced topics that you can explore and learn new stuff with. That's the entire point. You can start off by taking a quiz and it will match content that fits your skill level and interest. That's great. They also have hints and complete solutions instead of just the correct answer on the final page of a math book, for example. You can try Brilliant out for free by going to brilliant.org slash if you want to sign up for the annual premium subscription, the first 200 people to sign up get 20% off through that link. So I will put it down in the description. Thank you Brilliant for sponsoring the video and uh, thank you guys for watching. See you again soon. Bye. Gosh, a long way to turn off the camera.